Well, good morning, everyone. I have been so blessed to hear the Glendale Adventist Academy Choir and Band and the Vallejo Drive Choir. Can I hear you say amen? amen. I imagine some angels were singing on that last one. Didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? Why not every man? I'm just glad I came to church to share a short message with you this morning. But uh, I just want to thank the young people and Tim and Sherry. Thank you for your music. We were touched by the music this morning. You know, I was looking at the schedule or schedule, depending on where you come from. And it said uh, we're going to be done for lunch at 1230. And I promise you we will, maybe before. And then it says at 1.30, I will answer all of your questions. I was a bit shocked with that announcement, but I will try to answer a few of your questions. We have a wonderful mini concert at 2 o'clock and then a short but powerful presentation on radical joy as we join the Lord of the Harvest. We see lives change. We're going to share some true life stories video which will touch your hearts just as the music touched our heart this morning. So it won't be a long afternoon, but it will be powerful. And I'm just glad I came to church today. Are you? So let's pray. Father in heaven, what a privilege to be here in this place made sacred by your presence. We've been blessed with beautiful music, which has lifted our hearts and spoken to our minds. And now as we hear a, a word from you, I pray in the name of Jesus that our hearts would be drawn closer to the one who loves us with an everlasting love. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have you ever prayed a bold prayer? You know, I, I really didn't grow up ba praying bold prayers. My first prayer was, Thank you for the world so sweet. Remember that one? Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the... No, birds that sing. Thank you, God, for... Yeah, I, I remember praying that. And, um, you know, it's not really a powerful prayer. I remember one time I was, Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the birds we eat. And I was a vegetarian. I just, I just never heard uh, really powerful prayers. That's not a criticism. But I think we live too late in Earth's history to pray weak prayers. I think of the prayer of Elijah the prophet. I was, uh, I was on Mount Carmel two weeks ago praying for the spirit and power of Elijah. I think of Elijah when when he stretched out his body over a lifeless child and cried out, O oh Lord, my God, let this child's breath return to him. I wasn't taught to pray like that. Or the simple but life-changing prayer of a young boy who had the courage to say, Speak, Lord. When the priests weren't listening, and when the high priest was negligent, a ten-year-old boy said, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Life-changing prayers. But somewhere along my journey, I came across the word of Jesus, and it changed my life. This one prayer redirected the trajectory of my life. And I share it with you, not so that you'll end up where I am, but so you'll end up where God wants you to be. It's found in the passage that Marina read for us this morning, when Jesus is about to send out his followers. He's already sent out the twelve, just of the lost sheep of Israel, but now the seventy, and that's us. It's all of the descendants of Noah, that's all of us, and he sends us out to every place he himself will go. And he tells us, as we studied last night, for those who were with us, that the harvest truly is great. 
that there are men and women, boys and girls, and I've seen it with my own eyes, who are just waiting for the invitation to become a part of the kingdom of heaven, who are tired of a meaningless life and silly conflicts, who want to believe there's more to life than a cosmic accident. Jesus says, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Now, I'm not an expert in the Greek language. Some of you here may be. But I do know there are more than one, there's more than one verb in the Greek for pray. To make a request, to express a desire. But this is a really strong verb that's here in the text. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. It's strong like that song you just sang by Moses Hogan. Yeah, strong. And it means to cry out or to beg. Now, before you ask me the obvious question, why should we cry out to God? Let me just describe this word because I I want to give you a different way to pray than thank you for this nice day. This verb, deomai, it means to beg or cry out because the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Cry out to the Lord of the harvest. This is the same verb that's used in Luke 5 where a leper comes to Jesus and it says, he begged Jesus, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. This man's dying. It's not a weak little prayer, thank you for the food we eat. Lord, If you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I'm willing. I'm glad he's willing, aren't you? I'm willing, he says. Be clean. He touched him. He didn't need to, but that's the kind of Savior we have. He reaches out and he touches lives and he changes people. It's a strong word. It's used in Luke 8. 38, this verb, deomai, to beg or cry out. Do you remember the man controlled by a legion of demons? And, and, and Jesus sets him free. I've been harassed by demons before. My family was involved with the occult. I know what darkness feels like, but I thank God I've never been controlled by a demon. But this man had a legion. And when Jesus set him free, Jesus then says, I'm going to go back now. And, and the Bible says in Luke 8, 38, Jesus begged him, excuse me, the, this former demoniac begged Jesus that he could go with him. Intense prayer. Jesus says, you go back to your people. You see, Jesus will be with us always. Even when he's away, he's with us. You go back to your people. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. But this word, to beg, to cry out to the Lord of the harvest. It's a strong word. It's, it's found in Luke 9, 38, where a man has a son who's controlled by a demon that would throw him into a fire. And the father came and says, Lord, if you can, if you're able, deliver my son. It says he begged him. I don't know if anyone here has had a child under attack. I've had a son under attack. And you don't pray weak prayers. You cry out to God. So so this word is powerful. It's challenging me to pray different from thank you for the world so sweet. To cry out to God. Because the harvest, it's great. There's just people around the world. I see them just waiting for the invitation. I saw a man baptized a month ago in Nairobi. He was about twice my size. Now, I know I'm short, but he was big. He was a Maasai warrior. He had a borehole in his ear that was so big you could check the weather through it. And he gave his life to Jesus that day. I've seen miracles happen. But there's many more miracles before we're done. Some of you here are praying that we'll be done soon and Jesus can come. Am I right? And so Jesus says, I want you to cry out to the Lord of the harvest. Now, someone might say, but wait a minute, Derek. Why should I cry out? Am I trying to change God's heart? How 
How many of God's children does he love? How many does he want to be saved? So when I cry out to him because the harvest is great, whose heart needs to change? We get so distracted. I do. You can even get distracted doing good things. I cry out to the Lord of the harvest because, because there are people just waiting and, and they need to hear. But here's the, here's the radical part of the prayer. It says, therefore, beg, cry out to the Lord of the harvest, literally to throw out laborers. You know, the verse that we read, I don't know what it said in your version, Marina, it was beautiful, trans but, but my Bible just says send out. It sounds so sweet and gentle, but that's not what Jesus said. It says literally hurl them out, cast them out. That verb, ekbalo in the Greek, is used for casting out demons. That's pretty strong. That verb, ekbalo in the Greek, when we say, I cry out to God to throw out laborers, is used when Jesus went to the temple and they turned it into a marketplace. Do you remember the story? And Jesus made a whip out of cords. And, and he gently asked them if they would leave if it was okay. Right? Wrong. John 2, verse 15 says, he drove them out. Ekbalo. You say, wow, Eric, that's kind of a strong prayer to pray. Couldn't I just pray, dear Jesus, help me to have a nice day? You want me to pray because the harvest is great, people are waiting, Jesus is coming soon. You want me to give him permission to, th by the way, I can't just pray that for you. I have to say, Lord, you can begin with me. Would you throw me out into your harvest? And by the way, do you know he does that to save us? Uh, we're already saved by his grace, but we get so distracted. We think we're going to live here in Glendale forever. We gather our stuff. We, we have these little storage buildings where we put extra stuff. Do you have those in Glendale? We all believe we can't take it with us, but we store our stuff, and Jesus is coming soon. Cry out, change my heart, O oh God. Use me in your harvest work, whatever it takes. It was uh, 17 years ago, I was on the faculty at Southern Adventist University. I don't know, has anyone here been to Southern? They call the place Happy Valley. Who wouldn't want to live in Happy Valley? My colleagues, I joined the faculty when I was 33. My colleagues are still there. I mean, when you go there, you stay there. They even have a cemetery there so you can wait there until Jesus comes. It's Happy Valley. But I found this text of Scripture, and I began to cry out to God. I didn't really know how to pray like that. But I do believe the harvest is great, don't you? There's going to be a multitude that no one can number in the kingdom of heaven. I believe the harvest is great, and I know that many are distracted, including me. So I cried out and said, God, I give you permission, whatever you want to do. Throw me out into your harvest work. And God picked me up and threw me to California. Now, I know you think California is the nicest place on the planet. But my wife wept when we went back after interviewing at Calamasa Church. You know where that is? They say Calamasa, Yucaipa. It's an hour and a half from everywhere. Okay. Yeah, it's an hour and a half from the mountains and an hour and a half from the ocean and an hour and a half from... The airport, I don't know. We wept when we went back, but it was so clear that God had asked us to go there. After three and a half years, we just started building a house. And I get this phone call from a, a church leader in Orlando. Their pastor had just left and started his own church two miles down the road. That's painful. 
And th this elder of the church said the only thing that God knew would touch my heart. He said, Derek, we need someone to come here and point us to Jesus. It was so clear, brother. But my wife had just started building a house. She'd been planning for two years. We just put in the foundation. Now, you know how expensive it is to build a house in California, right? You live here, right? Do you know that our impact fees to build that little house were $35,000? That's cheap, you're thinking. But my first house was $37,000. So we just paid them $35,000. We had concrete and a few pipes sticking up out of the ground. Do you, have you ever tried to sell a lot with concrete and a few pipes sticking up out of the ground? And we get called to go to Orlando, Florida. And, and by the grace of God, we ended up, my wife said to me, I love my wife. We've been married for 40 years. She's my best friend. She startled me. She said, Derek, we didn't come to California to build a house. We shouldn't stay here just to build a house. Amen? I mean, that's profound. We end up in Orlando. I'm walking along in an early morning walk, and I'm complaining to God. I'm like, God, this could be a disaster. I mean, all of my life savings are in a few pieces of concrete and pipes. But I want to tell you, when you give God permission to throw you out into his harvest work, and I'm not saying you'll all be preachers or, you know, medical missionaries, though some of you will be great teachers of music. I'm not sure what you'll be. But I know if you give him permission, he'll put you where you'll be most fruitful in his work. So I'm walking along and I'm complaining to God. I'm like, God, this could be a financial disaster. And the Spirit of God rebuked me. And he said, have I ever failed you? <laughs> I said, no, Lord, you have never failed me. <laughs> we saw more, more miracles in Orlando than I have seen in my whole life. It was in Orlando, Orphe, that Hope Sabbath School was born. We had no idea what we were doing. We were all volunteers, including my wife, who's a nurse practitioner, but she was the executive producer. We had no idea that within four years it would be the most broadcast program worldwide on the Hope Channel, now 150 countries. Sometimes I'd complain. I'd say to my wife, babe, I'll call her babe. I said, babe, I am really busy. This is a lot of work. And my wife looked straight at me, and she said, where else do you give a million Bible studies a week. I'm like that. I guess that's the most important thing I do, right? From there, we get picked up after six and a half years and thrown to Washington, D.C. That is the worst traffic in the country. 95 down to the Beltway. It's right there. That's where we lived. We rented a little condo. There were some people that weighed, I'm sure, 300 pounds who were right above us. You see, you have to know when you give the Lord of the Harvest permission to throw you out that this is not your agenda. It's his agenda. You're not just here to make a living. You're here to make a difference for the kingdom. I love my job there. I was the editor of a professional journal called ministry and I went trained pastors around the world it was beautiful and two years ago on April 11 I was called out of the back of the auditorium about this size they said they want to talk to you on the third floor now I don't know it's just my personality but when I thought third floor I thought I was in trouble you know the principal wants to see you you don't think I won an award you think what did I do I go up to the third floor and they say, um, we'd like to ask you to become the president of Hope Channel. I'm like, I've been a volunteer for eight years. You want me to become the president? 
They said, yes, we'd like you to think about it. We need to know by 3 o'clock this afternoon. So, of course, you know what I do. I contact my wife. We pray. I contact a mentor. Some of you would know if, if I mentioned his name because I believe that in a multitude of counselors is safety. I ask him to pray. But in my heart, I'm like, no. You see, we're not that smart. But if we'll ask the Lord of the harvest to throw us out into his harvest, he knows where we'll be most fruitful. So I'm thinking, no, I don't think so. I'm going to turn this down. I'm scheduled to film all day in the Hope Channel studio. And as I'm walking into film, I look on the screens. There's screens there, all different parts of the world. We have 50 affiliates around the world. We just broadcast, we just produced in Loma Linda studio, in our studio, 160 programs in Arabic and Farsi. You know, there are people who speak Arabic who are going to be in the kingdom, amen? And Farsi, you know where that is, right? That's Iraq. You think they're not going to come? The Lord's going to bring his children home. And there's all these screens, and I'm walking in, and as I look up at the screen, I'm walking in to film for the day, and they tell, let, let us know by 3 o'clock. And there I see Hope Sabbath School. And I'm teaching the Word. And, and then I see Dwight Nelson. Anyone know Dwight Nelson? He's my favorite preacher. My parents watch Dwight Nelson. And so do about a million other people around the world. And I saw Dwight Nelson interviewing. He's talking to someone. And I thought, oh, I love, I love Dwight. I wonder who he's talking to. And the camera switched and he was talking to me. And the Spirit of God caught my attention. And said, Derek, I have been preparing you all of your life. I became president of Hope Channel that day. It was not what I wanted. In fact, the next week was the hardest week of my life. It was hard. There were major challenges. But it's okay. Jesus tells us, you're just lambs. You're not that smart. You're not that strong. But if you will let me put you where I know you, where you'll be most effective, if you'll trust me because I am the good shepherd, if you'll lean upon me, I will work through you in life-changing ways. So don't ask me where I'll be next year. I have no idea. I certainly don't have some kind of agenda. But I just came to challenge you today. I'll talk to you this afternoon after the nice meal and the little mini concert. I'll talk to you for just a little while about the radical joy you'll experience when you give God that kind of permission in your life. But I just came to challenge you today to not just pray, dear Jesus, help me to have a nice day. But to have the courage to say, Lord of the harvest, I cry out to you. I'm not trying to change your heart, but I do want to give you permission to change my heart. And I cry out to you to throw out laborers into your harvest in Glendale and in Van Nuys and in Burbank and in Loma Linda. And, and sometimes, well, I learned something from basketball. Does anybody here play basketball? Any, any basketball players here? Yeah, okay. I grew up in England. We didn't play basketball there, which was good because I'm not that tall. But, but, but I learned something about this prayer, and with this illustration, I'll close, and we'll go and have some lunch on time. I learned something about this prayer that Jesus challenges to pray from, from the game of basketball. You see, the Lord of the harvest knows where we'll be most effective, right? So we cry out to him, Lord, wherever, throw me out into your harvest, wherever you want me to be. So a couple of years ago, someone sent me a YouTube link. You know what YouTube is? If you don't, where have you been? Ask someone in, dressed in black what YouTube is. They sent me a YouTube link. Maybe some of you saw it. It was a basketball game. And it was three minutes, three seconds, excuse me, from the end of the game. And 
And the guy's got the ball. He's in his own court. And, and there's the center. And the, and the hoop's way down there. And, and there's just no way. He can't go up there and do a layup shot or whatever else. He's just way back here. And there's just three seconds left. And he does something I've never seen before. He takes the ball and he whirls it over his head. And it's way up in the air. And the folks on the opposition team are just hoping it won't go in. And the folks on his team are hoping it will go in. And the ball's coming down and all of a sudden, ah, the buzzer goes. But you know the rule with basketball, right? If the ball's already on its way down, right? It can still count if it goes in. Ah, buzzer goes. Everybody's like standing still, frozen. And the ball comes down straight through the hoop. Well, this guy over here who threw the ball, he's going. The game's over. He won. And these people are like, <laughs> they're crying on this side. Sometimes when you cry out to the Lord of the harvest, is there a name for that kind of shot? Someone said, someone said it's called a hope shot because you throw it and you hope it will go in. I don't know. Sometimes when you ask the Lord of the harvest, and some of you are going to have the courage to pray this prayer. Sometimes the Lord may say to you, okay, I'm going to send you as a student missionary to Micronesia. You ready? Like, okay, God. Okay, you're not that strong, right? No, I know. Not that smart. Okay, don't have to rub it in. All right, you ready? And God will throw you halfway across the world. But it's okay. You don't need to be afraid because he's with you. And he makes a basket every time. Sometimes, though, when you pray this prayer, you go, I'm ready to go to China, Lord, or Russia, or the moon. There's another shot in basketball called a slam dunk. Do you know what a slam dunk is? Can anybody here do a slam dunk? I've thought of trying to do one with a stepladder, but I think it'd be dangerous up there on the stepladder with a basketball. But a slam dunk is an amazing move if you've never seen it. Why the, the players is incredible. Sometimes they pass to someone and then they go airborne. They have like these rockets in their shoes. And they go way up in the air. Have you seen it? I mean, it's phenomenal. And the ball comes to them and they go. And when they make the shot, what direction does it go? Straight down. Bam. Bam. They'll break the hoop if they can, right? Bam. Sometimes. When you cry out to the Lord of the harvest, maybe you're working here at Glendale, Advent, the hospital Glendale Adventist Medical Center. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Maybe you're working at Glendale Adventist Academy and you say, God, maybe you're here in 8th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, ready to go, wondering wherever you are. You're like, God, I'm ready. Wherever you want me to go. Okay, God, is you ready? Yes, Lord. Fully surrendered. Whatever you need, Lord. He says, okay, ready? Here we go. <laughs> Stay right here. Stay right here. You say, well, that didn't work. Yes, it did, Lauren. It means when you get up tomorrow and go to Southern California Conference office, you are not there just to make a living. You are there because the Lord of the harvest wants you there. What a difference when you go to work or go to school or go on a mission trip. It's not about our agenda. It's about believing that the harvest is great and Jesus is coming soon. And we're saying, Lord, I'm available. Whatever you want to do. We'll learn this afternoon that when we pray that prayer, we will experience radical joy. Let's pray. Father in heaven, give us courage to go beyond safe little prayers because Jesus is coming soon. We don't want to engineer our future or try to engineer each other's future. But Lord, put us where you know we will be most fruitful in your work. And we will give you all of the praise now and forever. In the name of Jesus, amen.